Hi, this is Ahmed Gamal, and I'm here today to talk to you about profiling in Unity. How to diagnose performance problems in your game. A little bit about me first. I'm a games development lecturer here in SAE Institute Dubai. I'm also the head of the department. And generally speaking, I like to introduce myself by mentioning my favorite game. So I love Assassin's Creed. I just love how there are diff so many different things that you can do in the game and you can um, achieve the same mission in so many different ways. I have been working in games for the past 10 years and I have worked in so many different kind of applications like mental reality, virtual reality, mobile games, uh, simulation, educational games. So I have got my share of performance problems and hopefully by sharing some of the few tips that I learned today, I will save you a bit of time when you are working in your own product. So here is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, we can first talk about rendering a frame, what actually happens when you render a frame. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the GPU pound versus CPU pound. What's the difference between these two terms? Then we're going to talk about the profiler window and the frame debugger window, which are the tools that Unity provide to you to understand and analyze more about what's happening in your game. Then we're going to just end the session with some final steps. So who is the session for exactly? Well, if you can recognize what's happening to this in uh, here in this picture, and you can see that this uh, bloody uh, monitor, uh, bloody screen with the monitor is, is actually code, and this is Unity, then you are in the right place. Um, so you should be a game developer who is interested in, in uh, analyzing the game and checking some of the performance issues. Now, if you are already an expert in this, then this session might not be for you. If you're already fully aware of what the profiler does and how it works, uh, then it might not add that much to you. Okay, so let's talk first about rendering a frame. Just like in a movie, a frame is one image among many that's ready to be presented on the screen sequentially for the illusion of animation. So basically, when once you see multiple frames uh, in a row, uh, then your brain gives you the illusion that these are being animated. This, these are actual objects that's moving. Um, now, unlike a movie and games, there are many things that need to be done before you can actually be ready to present um, this frame on the screen. Uh, this could include handling the input, so what happens when the player presses space, or what happens when the player clicks in the mouse button. This also could include loading some data, like the textures that you need to draw. And this is specifically why the game frame rate gets affected heavily by um, the CPU and the GPU. So if you're trying to achieve a good frame rate, then you should consider both sides. You should consider optimizing the logic and you should consider optimizing um, the GPU rendering and the shaders uh, that you are using. So let's share some uh, desired frame rates and some of the examples. So based on the game type, you should be aiming for different frame rates. So if it's a very slow uh, game that doesn't need a lot of interaction and the quick interaction doesn't make really make a difference, um, like puzzle games, for example, then 30 frames per second is going to be enough. And uh, this is going to give you uh, an optimization um, or it's going to be a sort of optimization, so you can use the uh, uh, press of the performance budget with, for other stuff. Now, if you are in like a, playing a racing game or, or a shooter or a game where it needs a lot of speed and quick reaction, uh, then you will need to aim at least to 60 frames per second because uh, this makes a huge difference in the every decision. This split second makes a huge difference in every decision the player takes. Now, if you're aiming for VR, then you, you even need to go higher. You need to go to 90 frames per second. And the reason is, uh, you, as this is going to be a virtual reality that's surrounding you, you will get really, really sensitive to any uh, change in the frame rate and change in, the, in, the, in how the speed the uh, things are. Uh, so it needs to be really, really fast. It needs to refresh really, really fast so that you don't feel dizzy while you are playing or you don't feel uh, weird while you are playing in VR. 
So now if you're aiming for 60 frames per second, what's the milliseconds budget for a frame? So if, if, if the 60 frames per second is what you're aiming for, uh, how much milliseconds can a frame have? And the answer is pretty simple once you remember that it's, it's just 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So you can just divide 1,000 by your target frame rate. And this is going to give you um, how much uh, milliseconds uh, any frame could have. So for 30 frames per second, you're just going to get uh, 33 milliseconds. For 60 frames per second, you're just going to get 16 milliseconds. For 90, you're going to have just 11 milliseconds. So your frame, both your logic, uh, like the code for the GPU and the CPU, should not exceed this time millisecond. Before we go to profiling, then we need to also talk about vSync because it affects the uh, uh, the frame rate quite a lot. So there is a fixed uh, refresh rate for your monitor, and it plays a big role in the frame per second. Whenever you have six refresh rate, uh, usually it's around like sixty hertz, uh, which means like sixty ref refreshes. Um, for example, uh, you will need to think of it as as a bus. You know, like it's uh, if if you miss one of the refreshes, then you can only the GPU can only draw uh, in the next refresh. That's if VSync is on. Now, if the VSync is off, then the GPU is gonna try to draw a uh, bright away, and this is gonna lead to something that's called screen tearing. This is a problem that happens whenever uh, the GPU or the monitor refreshes with. Uh, while the GPU was not done rendering yet. Uh, so you get half of the new image and half of the old image, and it looks something terrible like this image on the right. Uh, so it's usually on. You Most of the time you want it on, and on mobile phones, uh, most of the time it's actually enforced by the hardware. So you're going to need to consider uh, what's happening there. Because if the GPU, uh, for example, if it goes from... Uh, it takes 17 milliseconds, then automatically uh, your game is going to uh, use uh, 30 frames uh, per second, uh, not the 60. Okay, let's just start with profiling. The first question that you always need to ask yourself, is my game GPU pound or CPU pound? Is uh, the rendering just actually a problem or the code and the logic that's the problem the gpu and the cpu work hand in hand to deliver the frame in the end to the monitor um, to be drawn on the monitor to show up on the monitor uh, so the cpu basically loads all of the textures and all of the resources decides where the objects are going to be decides the different positions for the different uh, meshes and then it gives all of this information to the gpu the gpu takes all this information from the vram and it tries to um, draw all of this on the screen or all of this in one image or the buffer and then it shows this image on the screen in the end now it needs to happen in sync because whoever is a slower it, this is going to decrease uh, the frame rate uh, considerably fast now the quick way to know uh, with your GPU pound or, uh, or CPU pound is just to look at the is to look for uh, these two uh, numbers here uh, the CPU 17 line, uh, the CPU millisecond and the GPU millisecond uh, and this is basically you will find in the profiler window uh, just above uh, the details of the hierarchy uh, we, we're going to cover uh, the details about this window and how to get to this window in the end, but just just like a very quick way uh, to know if if it's GPU pound or CPU pound. Okay. Now, what is the profiler window and how to get that? So let's see from the beginning. If I if you don't have this window already open, you can get it from window analysis. And then you can get the profiler or the profiler standalone process, which is exactly the same thing, but it runs in its own separate instance, so it doesn't get affected with the editor.
Now, once you have the profiler open, you're going to have this window. It will only work when you uh, run the game. If you are trying to profile the game itself, it will only work when you run the game. Now, you can uh, do the profiling in the play mode in Unity in the editor itself, or you can do the profiling for uh, a build. Now, if you're going to do the profiling for a build, then uh, once you run the game, the build is going to show up here, uh, and then you can choose it from, from this menu. How the profiler works is that it keeps recording data about uh, what's happening in the game while it's playing. And this data, this is why there is a record button here. And this is why there are a uh, previous frame and the, and the next frame and so on, because you can actually go frame by frame. You can even control uh, the different, how many frames it keeps track of uh, from uh, the settings or from the preferences here. This data can even be saved or loaded. Now, with this in mind, let's see how does this happen. So I, once I unpause the game here, you can see that Unity keeps recording all of this data all of the time. Now, if I click anywhere in this graph, right, then it will pause the game. And this is basically the frame, um, or this is basically the data that's related to the frame that I selected. There are different kinds of information that you can show and try to analyze uh, in the profiler. And to reach different types of information, you can add different modules. So there is analysis that's needed for the CPU usage, there is GPU usage, the rendering, memory, audio, video, physics. So there is a lot of stuff that you can uh, know and get information uh, with. Now, the most common is the GPU and the CPU. In order for you to get this number, you're going to need both of them enabled. Now, we're going to start uh, by uh, the CPU usage because this is the most common, especially for identifying problems with your script, with any scripts. Uh, issues. In the CPU usage, you can see here that you can take uh, these boxes to see the different options and different things that can uh, take from your CPU power and your uh, milli, uh, milliseconds budget. Here, in, in this uh, portion of the window, it shows a list of uh, all script calls, like all of the functions um, that, that ran into uh, this frame. Along with some information, very useful information indeed, about how many times this function was called in this frame, how much uh, garbage collection uh, was allocated, how much uh, time it took, to finish the or to, to run the, the, the code, and how much time the function itself uh, took to uh, finish its own code. Now, the difference between these two is that the time millisecond basically includes all of the calls that this function is going to, uh, to do. So if it calls any other functions and then the other function takes time, then this is going to be included in time limits. So this uh, makes uh, more sense to uh, look at uh, for quick understanding of which function takes the longest. Uh, now, the percentage also is very important because it shows to you how much uh, of, of the whole frame uh, time uh, was uh, processed or was used in this, uh, in this function. Okay. Now, there are some stuff that you don't really have control on, at least for the moment. And if you are beginning, uh, you might just want to focus on the scripts, for example, or you just want to focus on the garbage collector. So you can turn off uh, the other things and you can focus on, um, on whatever you want to analyze more. Uh, and then here uh, you can uh, expand this and then you can see the whole call stack.
So the different functions in Unity, uh, because there are some functions that it's, it's not necessarily that the code is you wrote. So this is all of the functions that's also included in the rendering pipeline. Uh, it's in the fixed update and the update. So your functions, if you wrote some script, you com some components and custom components, they, they are going to exist here in the update script uh, brand behavior update. And this is where you can see how much uh, garbage uh, you, you are allocating and um, how much um, time that the, your code is taking. Okay, so here you can see it's call by call. And this is all of the different uh, scripts that's, uh, that needed to run this frame. And all of the update functions uh, are there. So if you did any code that takes a uh, much longer time, it's going to show up here. Now, this is very useful as well whenever you try to compare. So if you did some um, algorithm, for example, to get the closest uh, enemy to attack or something like that, then you could see uh, simply how does this function affect uh, your, the gameplay and the performance of the game uh, before and after the implementation or between this algorithm and the other algorithm. Uh, and the other algorithm for uh, doing the same thing. So you're going to get uh, the, the time in millisecond, uh, and then you will be able to tell uh, which one takes longer. Now, it's very important to remember uh, that this is uh, very dependent on the machine um, that you are running the game on. Uh, the base case scenario is that you usually uh, run the code on a build. Okay. Now, this is not the only uh, view that's uh, there for you to, to see the different details. Uh, you can also see uh, the timeline. Now, the timeline uh, makes uh, things a bit more uh, difficult to find, but it also shows you uh, the exact uh, time uh, that the function took, and it shows to you uh, the order of events as well. Uh, so you can zoom in, and this, for example, the fixed update function from uh, the physics system. And this is the physics simulation. This is how much time it took. And then you can go here, and then you can see um, this is the pre-update function. After the pre-update function happened and finishes, then it's going to start the update function. And inside the update function, you will find that there are different behaviors. Then you can zoom in even more, and then you can find the update function for every element on its own and how much time um, it took. So if you zoom in more and keep zooming in, you can see that this is the simple enemy controller, and this is the update function, and this is how much time it took to uh, update this one, uh, which is just uh, two, uh, 0 0.02 milliseconds. So this code is quite optimized, and this, this is good. Uh, but you can basically see here um, what's happening overall. Okay, you can see also that the animation takes a lot of time to update. Um, and you can see um, that the post-processing as well um, is taking a lot of time. There's skin meshes. The... Um, Process animation. Okay. Now I'm running. Um, I'm running uh, many different programs and uh, different sample projects uh, at the same time here in my machine. So the CPU is taking a huge amount of time, like um, seventy-nine milliseconds. Um, there is a huge uh, frame drop if I play the game. But uh, basically, this is showing up here when it says uh, the the graphics. Uh, wait for graphics command buffer from the main thread. When when you see this function, this basically means that the render thread, the thread that's used for rendering all of these objects, is waiting for uh, the main thread to uh, to finish its logic. So the logic is taking way longer time um, than the than the graphics part than the GPU. So it's clearly here that it's CPU pan, at least within this condition within. Um, 
uh, within the situation where I have multiple applications running at the same time, multiple heavy resource applications running at the same time. So the GPU is waiting for the commands. And this gives me also, this is another way to tell if it's GPU, GPU pound or CPU pound. Uh, you will find something here just if it was the other way around, if the, uh, uh, the, the graphics uh, were running uh, really slow and the main thread is waiting for the render thread, then you will find the function here just that's basically called something like gfx um, dot wait for to present or to show. Um, and, and that's basically how you can tell uh, also what's happening in, um, in, this, in syncing between the two threads. As you noticed here, uh, it isolates the, the, the data per thread. You can expand uh, each thread to work on it, um, to focus on it more. Um, the, most of the Unity uh, code and logic works on the main thread. Uh, there is uh, another render thread that, that basically takes, for, takes care of all of the rendering. There is some uh, threads as well that's related to um, some things on the side. If you are using uh, the Unity dot system uh, or the job system in uh, from C Sharp, then you'll be able to do uh, much more. As you can see, most of the time here, the, these threads are, uh, are uh, idle. Uh, so you can actually uh, make use of this thread if you are using the job system, uh, and then your tasks are going to show up here, and your functions are going to show up here. Now, uh, it. I recommend that you save, like whenever you have uh, some key data that you found, you save an instance uh, to from it to a binary file, um, where you can load it again, and then compare it or, or do uh, something else, like uh, just try to analyze or share the information with uh, other people. Okay. Let's see, what did we leave? Okay. Now, the garbage collection is also very, very important because most of the time you will find that there is uh, spikes in uh, that happen in your game. And these spikes, basically, whenever you see like a, uh, something that's uh, like a sudden uh, jump in, in, the, in the performance of the milliseconds it's that the uh, game takes, uh, this is most of the time is because of uh, garbage collection. Now, if you are... Uh, uh, like basically if your code is generating a lot of garbage then it's the garbage collection is going to need to work harder and then it's going to need to work more often and then it's going to need to collect all of this uh, waste uh, more often so what's going to happen then is that these spikes are going to uh, run more often and which basically is going to cause frame drops so suddenly while well, the game is running smoothly and then Oh, frame, frame drop. And then again, after a while, again, after a while, which becomes very annoying to players. Uh, so what you will need to do is that you will need to ensure that you don't allocate a lot of garbage collection here. Things like uh, using camera.main in or uh, object or find the object of type or find the object with tag. Uh, if you use this in the update function, um, then uh, it's going to generate a lot of garbage collection. If you used, for example, strings um, and a lot, uh, lot of modifications in the strings in the update function, then you're going to generate a lot of uh, garbage collection. Uh, so, so basically, all of this is going to show up here um, as amount of, of um, garbage just generated. Um, and then the more of it that you will find, then the more uh, the garbage collection is going to run. So this is uh, very important for you to consider. Um, in, in the timeline, uh, another thing that you can consider as well, in the timeline, uh, if you see a huge waiting time, you'll not be able to see it here now because, um, because of I'm running multiple applications that are uh, resource heavy. Uh, but if you see uh, like waiting to present um, and it's taking a huge amount of time, this could possibly be because of uh, the vsync. Okay, that should be it for the profile window. And uh, that's that's basically um, uh, enough to get you started with profiling. And then uh, the more that you experiment with it, the, the more that you will get uh, to know how to use it to um, uh, isolate or identify which scripts exactly are causing uh, the issue.
So uh, what is uh, what if it's GPU bounded? What can you do? Like if you realize it's GPU bounded, what what the, what can you do to overcome that? Now there is a lot of um, a lot of optimizations that you can do. Uh, for example, for the texture sizes and the uh, size of the draw, the 3D model itself, and how many vertices that's in the 3D model. Uh, so this these kind of optimizations. Uh, uh, they can have their own uh, course, um, and there are a lot of resources online where you can find a list of these optimizations. Uh, we will focus here on the draw calls. Now, draw call is basically uh, is one command from uh, the engine uh, to draw something on the using the GPU or using the graphics API. So basically, uh, that's a OpenGL or Direct CD uh, for most cases. Um, and if there is no optimization at all, every object will be a separate draw call. Every object is going to be uh, a separate draw uh, call on its own. Uh, and the problem is draw calls are quite resource intensive. So it takes uh, a lot of time to uh, handle them for the graphics API to handle them. So the main idea behind uh, optimizing uh, the the GPU usage is batching. In a way, in, in there are different kind of batching or uh, different uh, concepts behind uh, uh, how to do it. Uh, but the main idea is that you basically uh, draw them as one block, draw multiple objects as one block. So it's going to be one draw call for multiple objects. Whenever you uh, use the stats window in the game view, uh, then you will see how much uh, was saved by batching. Uh, and it's, you can see here, for example, that uh, 183 uh, objects were saved by batching. Uh, there are multiple kinds of batching. Um, there's GPU instantiation, for example, the dynamic batching and the static batching. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of how to use them exactly. Uh, uh, you can find more information online. Uh, but just as a brief description, the GPU instantiation, when you enable it from the material, it makes sure that all the materials, uh, or sorry, all the objects that's using the same material are going to be uh, drawn uh, uh, together. Now, of course, that's all uh, the objects can be grouped together. Sometimes if they are really, really far, and that's not going to happen. Uh, now, dynamic patching, uh, it it's basically is uh very very useful as well because this is uh, if you if it's enabled in the project settings then it it will automatically try to do the same thing as a gpu instantiation however it has more restriction on what can uh, be uh, dynamically batched uh, because uh, for example this how many vertices are uh, in the mesh and so on uh, because this is again more of a guessing game uh, for unity now, whenever you mark an object as static, um, and if, if you mark many, many different objects as static, then basically uh, uh, all of them are going to be drawn as uh, in one draw call, which is great because uh, this uh, adds a huge amount of, uh, or saves a huge amount of uh, draw calls. So now let's see uh, what the frame debugger, or how can frame debugger help me understand what's happening in terms of the draw calls and um, batching and what's happening exactly with batching. So the frame debugger is very, very useful to go through all of the steps that the GPU is taking and uh, all of the draw calls. And it can help you find out why some objects are not batching together and are not being batched uh, in general. Um, so let's have a look at the frame debugger. So here is a simple scenario, and I already uh, pressed the play button so that the states get updated. And you can see here that there are three patches. Uh, now this is happening. Um, if I enable the frame debugger, which I can also uh, get from analysis and then frame debugger, and then in order for me just be able to see the data, I will just need to press on enable here. And then this is going to give me um, the camera printer, uh, which is the whole printing that happens and then takes it step by step to drawing um, and then 
uh, rendering the opaque geometry and it's the forward render the first actual call is going to be uh, the clear uh, z buffer and a stencil so this clears basically uh, the, the canvas that i'm drawing in order to view that i'm drawing and then you're going to have the rendered loop which is going to go uh, through all of the objects and then it's going to draw them now this draw mesh is in essence in essence and uh, the the best thing about this is that all of these cubes are being drawn together so as you can see they're actually uh, like a step here before that uh, you would have been able to see it okay we will we will cover this in a second and then the final draw uh, call is for actually drawing the sky box there is more stuff for the image effects but um, we we're not we're not focusing on this now so let's focus on how did this happen now if i get the cube and if i went to the project window if i chose the material that this cube have and then i disabled this option which is enabled gpu instancing instancing uh, you go here in the frame debugger window and then you will find that now this jump to uh, 5 and I didn't save anything by batching uh, and there is 5 uh, draw calls now so you can see every cube is being drawn in its own now this is a very uh, small scale because I'm just uh, showing it uh, on a cube but then uh, you can do this uh, for um, a bigger scenario and then any kind of patching is going to be way way more useful so let's open the frame debugger here and then we enable then you can see um, all of the different steps um, that's being taken to uh, draw the final look here in the game um, now it's important to mention here that the renderer that you are using is going to make a huge difference in what you will find here. Uh, so th the different renderers are going to have different commands. And by renderers, I mean whether it's going to be a universal render pipeline or the deferred, rend deferred rendering, rendering in the uh, built-in pipeline or the forward rendering in the built-in pipeline um, or HDRP as well. So you will find here different uh, bosses. Uh, so, for example, one for the shadow. Um, there are some uh, some GPU works that's happening here, but this is mainly for skinning, not for rendering. Um, so we're not worried about this at the moment. Uh, and then you have um, depths, uh, the color grading preparation for rendering, um, some configurations, and this draw take objects is the one that you're going to be looking for and here you will find that there is uh, many uh, meshes that get uh, patched uh, statically um, and then there is some meshes that didn't uh, get patched and if you choose one of the meshes where patching didn't happen uh, it will show you why uh, this call can be patched with uh, the previous one it will show you that it has different materials for example so this way you'll be able to tell uh, the reason if the patching is not happening for some reason then you'll be able to tell why it's it's not happening it's not like 100 percent accurate it doesn't give you much more detail it gives you details about the rendering state about uh, what is the color and what is the texture because if any of these changed uh, then uh, between two objects then these two objects can be batched together so this is the information that you can uh, find here So that's basically it for the frame debugger. Um, and uh, hopefully this, these tools will be able to help you uh, figure out where, the, where the, any problem that you are uh, facing uh, coming from. So some final tips about profiling. You're going to need to profile um, not in play mode. And try to profile the build itself. So try to build the game and then connect the profiler to the build. You can even do that on the device. So if you are targeting a mobile platform, 
you can build on the Android and then you can connect um, this to uh, your device to your computer and Unity is going to get the data as well um, and you, it would be much more realistic data then. Um, also try to uh, profile on the final scene um, not on some test scene or side scenes uh, fit, it's understandable of course if, if there is something that you need to focus on uh, but most of the time the actual problems happen uh, when you integrate uh, the objects or uh, or multiple things together uh, and this is when you will not be able to tell where this problem is coming from exactly because you have so many things going on in the scene uh, so try to profile on the final scene that you can uh, use and in the same exact environment uh, as your target uh, device and target audience uh, play, uh, playing sessions. Uh, so let the game run for a while uh, before you start profiling. Uh, so sometimes the, when, when the CPU heats up or when the device is like, uh, has been running the game for a while and it, uh, it's starting um, the battery is getting low or something then it's going to affect the performance uh, so uh, let the game run for a while first so that you can see uh, what's actually going to happen after the players plays for some time and with that i um, end the session and thank you so much for listening uh, here is my link and if you want to connect i'll be very happy to answer any questions you have uh, i'll be very happy to help you with uh, with further subjects if needed um, and thank you so much uh, for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.